Naya in Indy. I mean, this is a really weird list, too. I mean, he's got two Voyaging Satyrs, four Sylvan Caratids, four Voice of Resurgence, two Tristani Selesnya's voice. Um, Good luck killing that dude, my giant. With the, uh, two copies of Archangel of Thune. He's all in on Planeswalkers and Gods, though. He's got three Elspeth, three Ajani, three Xenagos, three, two Chandra's Pyromancer. I mean, he's really into Planeswalkers and Gods in this deck. Hart also sitting at 5-0 with this Naya mid-range deck. Gonna start off with the Temple of Abandon. He did mulligan a six this game. Gearhart is just gonna play Temple of Anality. A little mid-range action here. And you felt like this deck was pretty good against mid-range decks. Yeah, so. I mean, if, if, if there's ever a matchup where you wanna play uh, your black-green constellation deck, it's certainly against a deck like this. It's it's not really gonna put a lot of pressure on you early on. And But they, they do have some over-the-top threats and Planeswalkers, which you, you can have difficulty dealing with because um, Adam has a lot more Planeswalkers in a traditional mid-range deck. And Kevin's deck, aside from Hero's Downfall, um, can't really deal with Planeswalkers. I mean, like we've noticed before, he can't really attack very well. Mm -hmm. So he has somewhat difficulty dealing with Planeswalkers. He has, have, does have Banishing Lights, um, but short of that, I mean, um, he has somewhat difficulty dealing with a wide, a diverse threat of Planeswalkers. Sylvan Carrington comes into play here for Heart. We saw Gerhart, it's the Heart Mirror. Is now going to play a Mana Bloom into an Eyeline of Blossoms. That Mana Bloom is going to come back on Gerhardt's upkeep. The card drawing engine is online. We are online. <laughs> Temple Guard going to come and play untapped here for Heart. We'll see what we can do with five mana. This might be an Ajani, perhaps? That's an Archangel of Thune. And he doesn't have Storm Breath Dragon in his deck, which is like really? crazy to me. <laughs> he just doesn't have any copies of Storm Breath Dragon in his deck. So, um, a, you know, obviously Archangel could be effective in some matchups, but right here, if, that's, if that was a Storm Breath Dragon, it'd be... Yeah. Uh, Pretty insane right now, unfortunately. Def definitely, like, because the Black Green Constellation deck, we say it's Black Green, it's got a small splash of white, four Banishing Light, yeah. a card that it certainly relies on to take creatures out, which it can't obviously take care of Storm Breath Dragon. Also, that's something that at the, I guess actually at the Block Pro Tour, they did have to worry about Storm Breath Dragon. So I, yeah, I the, take that statement. There were Naya decks at the Pro Tour that had the Storm Breath Dragon, and that's really the problem. I mean, obviously, they had four copies of Heroes Downfall and four Science of the Believers. Yeah. These versions only really play Heroes Downfall, and like, the, I think Kevin only has three copies. So Stormbird Dragon, um, just like it was a problem for BBD, is definitely a problem for this deck. Fortunately um, for Kevin, Adam's deck doesn't have any copies of Stormbird Dragon in it. And the engine is rocking and rolling right now. You saw Banishing Light take care of Archangel of the Moon, draw a card. Mana Bloom comes in and play, draw a card. Mizzet Mortars, yeah, well, you do get to kill Eidolon of Blossoms, but the damage may already be done. I'm drawing a lot of cards with that card already, three to be exact. This Mana Bloom is gonna come back to the grip here. Gerhardt will take a draw. He draws another copy of Mana Bloom. Yeah, so pretty uh, bad start there for Adam. He's has to just uh, lose card advantage with the Mizzium Mortars, and he has no other play for the turn. So um, it's going to be a tough one for Adam. At Kevin has a full grip currently. Here we see a Doomwake Giant. 4-6 in the house. Yeah, it looks like he has a second copy of Doomwake Giant in his hand. So if that one resolves, we're going to start seeing a lot of creatures dying. And there is a Xenagos. Now that's going to come in. And it can make a Seder token, but it's not any attacking. And you have to assume that the Seder tokens aren't going to be living either, yeah. realistically. Kevin's has plenty. He still has that Mana Bloom in his hand, too. So, um, oh, he's got two. He can at least do minus two, minus two, at the very least. He's got all the Mana Blooms. <laughs> so this is, and then there's a Courser. This is the kind of innovation I actually wanted to see. Top card's going to be Hero's Downfall. Like, when all these new cards come out, especially from Journey, I feel like Journey provided so many cards, and then it was just like, oh, I'll just play Mono Black, Mono Blue, and Blue White. And this is the kind of deck I want to see. This is innovation. It's now two copies of Mana Bloom, Doom Wave Giant, clear that out of the way. Your turn. Mana Blooms are going to come back. Like, I like engine this decks deck like this. This deck is insane. I, I, like, I like decks like this. <laughs> this I, is unbelievable. This is something new and refreshing to see get played. It is exciting. Like, I do like the idea of Idol and Boston decks being a thing. Um, so, you know, I'm all for Kevin continuing his dominance over this tournament. And think about when, like, Journey of the Next was spoiled and everyone was writing about it for the various websites out there. Mm -hmm. Like, no one was really talking about Eidolon Blossoms. No one was talking about Athreos and Mana Confluence, all these other cards, and it's like, oh, yeah, Eidolon Blossoms is just four mana, you know, cantrip or whatever, but it's a lot better than that. Yeah, it's, and it's funny that people, it's basically better, wow. <laughs> Double Mizium Mortars deals with the Doom Wake Giant. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you think about it, like think about cards like Argothian Enchantress, Enchantress Presence, all those cards have had huge impacts on whatever format they were legal yeah. for. So it kind of makes sense that Eidolon Blossoms would be. And the fact that it's a creature enchantment in a format full of 
creature enchantments. Mm -hmm. You know, it's obviously, you know, makes a lot of sense that a deck like that would exist. You see a little bit of manipulation here between Corsair and Temple of Plenty. Scry go to the bottom. Brain Mag gets the card on top. And Gerhardt does have another copy of Doomway Giant. Might as well get that out there, given how difficult it was for Hart to take care of the first one, having to use two copies of Mizium Mortars. This was kind of... I, I, I really didn't like uh, the Theros Pro Tour, the last Pro Tour. I, I didn't like the format at all. This was the only deck I kind of enjoyed watching play because it felt like the truest form of a block deck. Like, it's the, this is clearly the mechanic, so to speak, of the format. Mm -hmm. It's kind of really, it has a theme. Every other, a lot of the other decks just seem like, hey, here's as many good rares and mana that it can cast them. Like, Scrylands and rares, that's what the format felt like. That's what this the deck, bug deck and the deck, the Chapin one. Yeah, was it's basically Scrylands and rares. So I didn't really enjoy that format, but this deck um, and the heroic deck to a lesser degree mm -hmm. were, were the two decks that kind of reminded me of the old school block. Underworld Connections, the card on top here now for Gerhardt. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, when you think of block, it's always like the mechanic. Like, I, you can just think of, you know, all, all of the different blocks or whatever. It's just, you know, the slide one, obviously, as you see, Hart's going to pack it up here as he cannot catch up from just all of the card advantage that Gerhardt's generating. I think of um, Time Spiral block, yeah. uh, the Pickles deck. Yep. You know, the Morph deck. The Morph uh, deck. You know, the Mono Blue Morph deck. You know, that's kind of the mechanic of that format. Um, more f kind of being enhanced, and that being one of the best decks in the format, stuff like that. So that's typically what you see in block. It, in uh, there was goblins, obviously. There was well, affinity was too good. <laughs> that was the yeah. mechanic, but yeah, that was too good. You obviously. had yeah. So this so this block format, and uh, pretty much more than any other, I think, is really bad. It was just I, I thought Watsi did a bad job in terms. Of, I mean, there were a variety of decks, but. I've never seen a format where it was basically like, yep, just a bunch of rares in one deck. There's really no consistent theme or anything. It's like It felt very Jund-esque. Yeah. It did. And Even Champions of Kamigawa, which was effectively a block full of rares, yeah. <laughs> you know, or legends, so to speak. Uh, even that had themes. I mean, you had white weenie, eight, eight and a half tails, and then you had gifts and given. Yeah. So you had two distinct de decks where it's like there were clear themes around the format. Um, this format basically just felt like the two themes are clearly heroic and enchantments, yet the rares, the outside rares were just so good that it didn't even matter, you know? It definitely felt that way sometimes. That's yeah. what we're especially watching, when those two mid-range decks would just go up against each other. We'll take a look at the sideboards here. You know, Gerhardt looks like he's ready to go. Hart also just about the same. We'll take a quick look at these. Uh, you've got Adams in front of you. Why don't you start there? Well, he, he has one copy of Sun and Growth in his main deck, so that's a way to deal with enchantments like Banishing Light. He also has another copy in his sideboard, which is obviously pretty good. Um, the card that I'm actually most interested in is Anger of the Gods. He's got three copies of Anger of the Gods, and that's a card that can be really, really good against a deck like Black Green Constellation. It kills Brain Maggot, kills Carrothid, kills Idol of Blossoms. The only card that doesn't really kill is Corsair Crufix and Doomwake Giant, but again, Idol of Blossoms clearly a card you want to deal with there. He also has two copies of Dayside, another way to deal with enchantments. Um, everything else, two Miscutter Hydras, obviously not coming in. Celestian Charm, not really good in this matchup. He's got two copies of Scavenging Ooze. Um, don't think you need that in this matchup, along with an Assemble Legion and another Archangel and two Perforos. So uh, I really just see the Angers, the Daysides, and probably an extra Sundering Growth coming in. So six cards coming in here for him, um, which would definitely help him out a little bit after board. Other side of things for Kevin. Four Thoughtseize, three Nyx Fleece Ram, a Golgari Charm, two Obsidac Ghost Council, two Doom Blade, an Underworld Connections, and two Bio Blight. Uh, Brian Brondewin is the one who's been working on this deck quite a bit. We watched him the first round. He ended up losing. Uh, he's been doing relatively well ever since. Um, it's kind of funny. I take a look at the deck list, and I see two copies of Obsidac, and that just reeks of Brian. Yeah. He just finds a way just to put Obsidac whatever, in Whatever way I can jam yeah. in there. Um, as far as cards are concerned, uh, I actually like the idea of Thoughtseize. Uh, I like Doom Blade as well. I think it's kind of funny. We keep playing against these decks. Uh, does Kevin and Brian, where Dublin is actually quite good mm -hmm. as far as targets are concerned. Uh, I think connection is a little too slow. Bioblight doesn't do enough. I think Obsidian uh, isn't necessary to win these games. Much better against Esper, Monoblack to Ocean, stuff like that. Uh, may or may not want Nick's Fleece Ram, depending on Ke what Kevin believes is an Adam's deck. Uh, but I think Thought Season Doom Blade are just pretty easy to bring in. Yeah, he saw the character, so he knows he's probably not a hyper aggressive Naya deck. Um, he, did not, he, he doesn't know that he has no deal with Stormbred Dragon. Um, but that wouldn't really change any of his decision making. He's probably bringing in Doomblade no matter what. So, uh, again, I think the only way that Adam can really kind of win this particular matchup is if he draws a lot of um, enchantment removal or is able to 
keep that island of Bosnus off the table and his planeswalkers can really go into work. I mean, we kind of saw he drew one threat that game that was of any relevance. That was an Archangel of Thune, Thune that was easily answered by uh, Banishing Light. So um, I think Adam's deck still could put up a fight. It's just we're going to have to start seeing those planeswalkers show up a lot earlier than they did. So both players going to lay him out. And again, 5-0. and oh. Round six here in Indy, making our way through our 10 round standard open. Kevin Guerrero will be on the draw. He's up a game here again. Familiar face, has made top eight in some of our open series tournaments. Finals in the legacy portion of Detroit with Shardless Bug. Adam Hart, a player we're not that familiar with, but he's off to a beautiful start here with his different take on Naya mid range. Going to keep his opener. Just a stomping ground. You see, Gerhardt is going to play a temple of plenty. Top card is going to go to the bottom before passing it back over to Hart, who will draw in just a moment. See if there's anything to do on turn number two. Picked up an Elspeth for his draw. Just going to play a Sacred Founder before kicking it back over to Gerhardt. Looks like Gerhardt does have a copy of Sylvan Carrington in his hand. The question is, can he play it this turn? And it looks like he can via Overgrown 2 and the payment of 2 life, down to 18. So pretty good start for Kevin. Obviously, he's got, he's got his mana ramp. He's, he was able to scry a little bit, set up his draws. Not sure if he has the item on the Blossoms just yet. Um, Adam, again, just plays a Voice of Resurgence. Not very relevant in this matchup. Yeah, I was going to say, not, not a great card here. Yeah. There's a Brain Mag. It's time to see what's going on over there. You see a Mizium Mortars. Looks like a Tristani times two as then it goes in an Elspeth. So now Hart needs to draw lands. I, I have to say, the artwork on Brain Mag is disgusting. <laughs> it's pretty gross. <laughs> I actually can't believe that one got through R&D. That, that's, that's what they wanted. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they wanted, man. <laughs> I mean, all right. It's definitely gross. This is gross. Can't believe I got to start looking at brain maggots for the next year and a half. Look, that's somehow that's an enchantment too. But, <laughs> but uh, I think they did a nice job with that art. Oh, okay. I mean, it's meant to be disgusting, so I think they did a good job. Xanagos the Reveler gets taken. Adam really wants to draw a Challenger Power Master here. That would be awesome. And a fourth land somehow. And a fourth land. Top card here from Gerhardt is going to stay on top from Temple of Plenty. Hart's going to take a draw. Does he draw a fourth land? I think a fourth, he actually just drew another Xenagos. Yeah, I'm surprised Adam kept this hand. It looks pretty bad. I mean, none of the cards are relevant in this matchup. He didn't draw any of the cards. Like, and I know the Elspeth wasn't in his opener. He drew it. Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised he actually kept this hand. He didn't have a lot of mana. Voice of Resurgence is basically a do-nothing in this matchup. Xenagos is OK. And the Brain Maggot. Adam's going to show, oh, I drew a Xenagos. So you're looking at the exact same hand. Yeah, at this point, I think you have to take Mizium Mortars. It feels like, a, it feels like, eh, yeah, I think I'm with you. I think it's either Missing Mortar or Xenagos. Like, nothing's changed, obviously. So I think it's either Mortars or you take Xenagos. Yeah. And he will take the Missing Mortars. Gearheart going to play a Godless Shrine tapped. No good attacks to be had. Just has to pass the turn back over to Hart. See if Hart can try the fourth land. It looks like he did. It's just a little slow to the party. And a Temple of Triumph. So pretty good land there. At least he gets to set up his draw for the next turn. He's not be able to cast the, Revel the Xenagos this turn, but um, still gets to set up his draw for the next turn. Looks like he's still thinking about it, but or maybe he decided he wants to keep it. Yeah, so he's going to keep and pass. Let's see if Gerhard can get something out of the table and actually start dealing some damage. Yeah, Xenagos the Revel, if it comes down, it could technically generate Adam some mana as mm -hmm. well. Um, Unfortunately, I think Kevin does have an answer in one of the banishing lights, but he doesn't have a lot of other action. I mean, I don't see the idol. He still doesn't have the idol on. I'm not sure if he's able to draw his one Elspeth yet. So, um, it'll give Hart time to get back into this game. Yeah, Hart's definitely getting time to get back into this game. And here we see the uh, Tristani come down. Tristani again, though, not really impacting the board. He's not going to attack. He's got no uh, tokens to pop to, to, to uh, you know to populate with. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, he's going to gain life, but who cares? Carrot's going to pass the turn back. Going to save this banishing life for something more relevant. As you mentioned, Tristani is not really having a huge impact on this game. Ideally, as well, you know, he also has a mana bloom in his hand, but he's just looking for Eidolon to start yeah. triggering off all in the same turn. Got plenty of mana, and if he draws an Eidolon, that'll can trip along with the other stuff that he can put into play. So that Even seems like the best draw. A Doomway Giant would be reasonable, too. Yeah, um, it's, it's fine. It can attack through all this stuff. But yeah, clearly Eidolon's the draw here. There's a Courser. A little bit of life will be gained here for Hart from Tristani. We can just see the top card as well. So now Hart's kind of got a card drawing engine online. There's Temple. Hasn't played a land yet. So that's going to come into play. It's going to come into play untapped for Hart. 
So he's going to gain, he's going to only lose one, follow that up with another copy of Voice of Resurgence. Top card is a Temple of Abandon, so that'll be hard to draw next turn. All right, so Adam's starting to put together um, interesting board position here. Again, he's got a lot of Planeswalkers in his deck that can kind of help him um, really push his advantage, but um, again, he's got to make sure that he can dodge that Eidolon, because once that Eidolon comes into play, it's going to be tough for him to win. Archangel of Thune's a relevant one. That is a pretty good threat because he could actually, next turn, he'll be able to cast it, and then obviously very good with Corsair Crew Fix. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a, quite a nice little army there, along with uh, the uh, Tristani. Yeah, this does a lot of work. There is Xenagos. That'll give you a token to populate, assuming that Hart wants to make a Seder, and he will. A little bit of life gain here again. Tristani, I mean, really, really good card that's just underplayed. It's pretty difficult to cast, so it can only go into a certain kind of deck. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely a really good card. Here's a temple going to leave the Archangel on top. Yeah, I'm surprised he actually played the land. Maybe he want, I thought you might want to wait next turn might to actually mana. cast Archangel. Yeah, Yeah, sure, the Corsair, Corsair plus Archangel. Yeah. Because you don't know if there's going to be a land on top of your deck, but... Either way, it's going to be pretty good here next turn if he's able to get that Archangel trigger to resolve. Don't forget, we're gaining life equal to toughness here. So there's a lot of life to be gained. There's a Banishing Light. And how Gerhard finally decides, all right, this thing's got to get off of the table, especially with Archangel coming. At least maybe he has a backup Banishing Light, but it's just going to pass the turn back over to Hart. And Hart's getting a pretty good engine online now. Top card's going to be a Chandra. That's yeah. pretty good, too. And you see here, now without the land in his hand, I don't think he's actually going to be able to gain any life. So if Archangel goes away, his army basically can't, still can't attack through Southern Caritids. So that's kind of why I was hoping he'd hold on to that land to actually get at least one. Because even three threes here, just one counter is still good enough. Oh, there's Shastani again. So he's going to wait a turn, hopefully dodge a Brain Maggot. But again, again, even if a Brain Maggot does come, there is a Chandra. Chandra. Yeah. Hart's going to make another save so he can gain some life. Wow, so next turn, Adam can actually play Chandra, kill the Maggot that has the uh, Museum Mortars on it, then uptick Xenagos to generate enough red mortars. to overload it, if he decides to do that. Here's some attackers. No great blocks here for Gerhard, so he's going to have taken four. And now Hart's just going to pass the turn back. Gerhard needs to draw something on his action. He needs to draw, like, Eidolon, like, right now. Let's see what he picked up. Looks like Abrupt Decay, maybe? Yep, Abrupt Decay, Banishing Light, I look yeah. and think Mana Boom's in his hand yeah, as well. Yeah, that's, that's the grip, and it's not great. It's gonna take care of Corsair. Chandra will get turned face down, but that's the card that's coming next turn. I'm gonna follow this up with the Banishing Light and take care of Tristani. Uh, so he doesn't have enough mana, I believe, to go um, Chandra and Mizium Mortars anymore. Brain Mackens will come across two Zetagos before passing the turn back. Chandra, the draw here for Heart. Oh, no, he does. He could do it. He, has, he, he can go four mana oh, yeah, for he's Chandra. Got, yeah, he's got Exaxes. Yep, so he has Exaxes for that. And there is Chandra. We're taking this up. Brian Maggot's going to die. I would like my Mizium Mortars back, please and thanks. You take up the Xenagos. You get one, two, three, four. Let's make it five and six. A little overload action here. Not messing around. That's I mean, pretty impressive series of turns. Going to lose everything. Xenagos is going to go back to Heart's grip. Now Gerhardt has to completely rebuild. I'm not sure he's going to be able to do that because now he's under some pressure as well. An attack here for eight. He's going to put Kevin down to five. Facing two Planeswalkers, too. Yep. So, uh, yep, Kevin Gerhardt loses that game. And Adam Hart was able to, despite having a pretty slow start, Kevin just wasn't able to find the Eidolon in time to really kind of press the advantage. So yeah, you can it didn't how, really matter. You can see how important Eidolon is to this deck. Yeah. yeah so really, that's the, that was kind of my concern is that you're all in on Eidolon, really. If you're not, if you don't have an Eidolon, the rest of your deck just looks so weak. But uh, when you do have that Eidolon going, I mean, it's obviously pretty impressive. So uh, Adam does have more answers to Eidolon after board. So um, has to be feeling pretty good going into game three after kind of putting on a pretty impressive performance in game two. Uh, uh, yes and no, I think. Uh, the only reason I say that is because, like, Kevin has four Eidolons in his deck. He just didn't draw one that game. I think things get really bad for Adam if Kevin draws one Eidolon. Well, right? I, 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 I agree with you. Um, it gets very bad if he, he draws an Eidolon. But again, I think Adam has more answers to Eidolon after board, so it's still pretty good for him. 
The only thing that concerns me is because we saw a voice of resurgence in game two, I actually wonder whether or not Adam brought in the anger of the gods. Okay. Um, which, again, I think anger of the gods has to be pretty good it's in so this good. matchup. It's so good against I mean, Stack. obviously, I, I don't know what you have in your sideboard for if not a matchup where they have brain maggots and sylvan characters and Eidolons. Yeah. Like, you... Not only can you kill an Eidolon, but you could actually recoup some of the card advantage that you lost, you know, because you can potentially two or three for one them. So yeah. um, I wonder whether or not he decided to board in anger the guys simply because we saw a voice of resurgence in that, in that game. Yeah, we'll see. A voice, not a voice, a card that seems pretty bad in this matchup. But um, obviously if it dies, you get a token. It could be potentially pretty big. But if voice of resurgence is dying, in all likelihood, it's dying to a Doomwake Giant. So yeah, something your token's going not going to be that big anyway. Yeah. So we saw in game one when Kevin Gerhardt's deck gets to do its thing. It's sweet. In yeah. game two, when it doesn't do its thing. Not that impressive. <laughs> <laughs> kind of embarrassing. We'll see if he can do his thing this game, though. Uh, I, it's, uh, I find it really interesting. You, you just kind of have this deck like, kind of pegged. It's an idol, like, you have to draw it along. Yeah, it's an Eidolon deck, yeah. which is why I kind of thought it's not there just yet. Um, but again, I because like you have to expend a lot, like having to cast Banishing Lights and Heroes Downfalls on Planeswalkers instead of just being able to attack them is kind of rough because you, you really don't have a lot of ways to recoup card advantage. Um, you can't just keep one for winning your opponent if you don't have some sort of card drawing effect, yeah. And that's Eidolon Blossoms, yep. So you're basically this deck that has a lot of one for ones. Um, and you only have one card at Drawing Engine. You have Underworld Dreams, too. Underworld Connections, rather. Um, but you only really have two in your main deck. And sometimes you don't even board in the extra, or maybe you'll board out the others. Game three underway. We see an Overgrown Tomb here for Gearheart. Temple Garden going to come to play on tap. And now ban a Boom for one. Hart with just a Temple Garden tap, passing the turn back. He does have Voice Resurgence in his hand yet again here. So still opting to leave that card in in this matchup. He's going to take two from Sacred Foundry. See if he's going to drop voice or does he have a card like Sylvan Carry to? Looks like he does have a Carry to in his hand. See if he wants Man Acceleration or maybe get a little bit more aggressive. He'll go with the Acceleration before passing the turn back to Gerhardt, who will take a draw, and we'll see if he has anything sweet to do this turn. You saw the Eidolon in his hand, so he does have one this game. He'll take two. He's going to move a counter for Mana Bloom, and he's going to cast it. Engine online. Out of heart, I would kill this right now. Yeah, if you have a way to kill it, I would recommend killing it. That's a way to kill him. All right. All right, so step one in Adam's plan is complete. He was able to kill an Adelon. Now he's able to put a little more pressure on the board with the voice. Again, voice not going to be that effective. If Against Corsair decks, it just seems like voice is just so bad. Yeah. Um, but And here we see a Corsair crew fix, so. Top card, Swamp. That's coming into play. Garrett's going to gain life up to 17. Beautiful will be the draw for him next turn. And looks like all he can really do is just pass the turn back here. And so it looks like he might have a Doomwake Giant in his hand. So even though he, does, he might not have a second Eidolon, um, Doomwake is one of those cards that could potentially just take over games for him. Yeah. He has a Mana Bloom, and he does have other cheap art, uh, enchantments. So if he can generate maybe two or three activations, it might be enough. Hard firing off another Mortars here to take care of the course. They're coming across for two with the voice. But the things that, the things that Adam is firing off these Mortars on, they're already getting their cards back. Yeah. You know, Eidolon Cantrip, Corsair put a land into play. Here's a Mana Bloom that's going to be for just one. No, it's actually going to be for three. three. Okay. So, mm, this could be a big turn. Interesting. So it looks like he's trying to ramp with Doomweight. Hello. Oh, wow. We're just going to see three counters on a, on a voice. Are we going beat that style? Yeah, might as well. Use a 15, right? Yeah. Wow. Let's make a 10. So a Johnny finally comes down. One of the big Planeswalkers in his deck comes down and starts putting a lot of pressure on Kevin here. Kevin has nothing in play, and even if he's able to deal with that voice, that token's coming into play, and there's a Johnny still in play. He's got a Banishing Light something now, probably. If he has a Banishing Light, I think he's got a Banishing Light of Johnny. It's just too powerful. And now he's under the gun, like, immediately, too, because it's a 5-5 five, five voice. Yeah, this so what do you do? do you, drastically. Do you just Banishing Light the voice, or do you go after a Johnny? That's really tough. I mean, this assumes that he has. This assumes that he has Banishing Light in his hand, and I, I think that he does. Yeah, but he, I has, think he, he does. has slowed down drastically. Yeah, he, because of Mana Bloom, he has right now. He could do. He has six mana. He, it looks like he has an Abrupt Decay as well. So he could Banishing Light the Ajani and Abrupt Decay the vo the voice and just say, okay, you have a two-two token to play now. 
So I, I think the this is kind of an interesting question. Like obviously because of voice's text, he wants to kill. He wants to abrupt decay voice on his own turn, but then he'll end up taking two. Yeah. Right? Like if he just abrupt decays and then the opponent and then Adam Hart just goes, okay, I'll play another Johnny and put my guy and attack you again. Like I think there's an argument to be made of abrupt decaying on your opponent's turn, even though you'll give them the token because maybe you can work a situation where Doom Lake Giant can clean them up. Like there's no guarantee of that, mm -hmm. but like just not taking any more damage might be more important than anything. Yeah. Gonna play Mutavolt to start. I can see that. It's a little bit unorthodox. Like I, I don't think it's a great play. I think it's an option. So it looks like we're. Oh, he's so he's gonna play Doomwake Giant here. Doomwake a pretty good play too. Um, it could block. You gonna decay this now. But uh, the problem is that the Johnny's still in play now. So it's a, a bit of an issue. <laughs> yeah. So now. <laughs> If he plays another creature and just pumps it with pumps the token with the Johnny, Can't block. then you're basically in the same situation except your cre the creature you're dealing with is bigger now. Mm -hmm. Here's some mana. What's this? Oof, that's an enchant rule as well. That's a deicide. Wow, deicide. So this is pumping up the jam. Back Won't for stop. Five. Won't stop. Keeping swinging for five. Abrupt decay that token. Oh wow! So he had enough mana. Look at mana. Look at mana bloom. Ever heard of it? I thought you can only remove one mana at one counter at a time. All right, don't okay, look at Okay, yeah, I was going to say, Mana Bloom seems a lot better than I remember. <laughs> All right, don't look at Mana Bloom. Don't look at Mana Bloom. It's not good. Yeah, Mana Bloom stinks, it's man. It's fine. Nah. Stop. Mana Bloom is good. Stop. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's great when you're using it like thing. that. I was like, I don't think he can. Okay. I was yeah. like, either this card's way better than I thought, or we're both wrong. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, wait a second. I, don't, I didn't think he had enough I didn't think he had a mana up. I know he had a Mana Bloom, but I didn't think he had another mana up. All right, problem solved. Gearheart takes five. He's at five, <laughs> facing lethal. And there's an Johnny Stone play. This is banishing light time. All right, okay, Johnny's so gone. So now Johnny's gone, and now he has an abrupt decay for. But he has no cards left in his hand. It's just and I he's think at it's five. Lands, yeah. Perforos from Adam would be ideal, right? To be fair, I don't think that Hart has very much. Yeah, right I, now, I think. You know? But he's got a lot of he's got a lot of live top decks. You know, more more sure. than Kevin. Yeah, so Adam, I mean, Adam knows about the Abrupt Decay, right? Like yeah, he's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he saw it last turn, so he yeah. knows his creature's dying. Top card's going to go to the bottom from the temple. Gearheart at five, Hart at six. Gearheart, excuse me, at five. Adam Hart at 16. This is going to be an Abrupt Decay, presumably. Yeah, I can't care of that, so he can get his Mana Bloom back. His Archangel. That's, the last, uh, that's not the last card, but it's certainly a good one. All right, so let's see here. Looks, Looks like, like a brain, a, a thought sees. Can't cast that card right now. Yeah, she has to pass. Uh, you're gonna play Temple Guard and pass the turn back. Can Adam gain any life? Can Adam gain two life somehow to finish this game out right two here? Two separate increments. Yeah. <laughs> Scavenge views would be pretty huge. All right, just an attack. Gonna put Gerhard down to two. Archangel's gonna get a little bit bigger. Heart's gonna gain a little bit of life. Let's see if Arn has like a follow-up play at all. He's tapping man. He's got a follow-up play. Another Planeswalker? Chandra, perhaps? Chandra would be a beating. Oof. That's huge. And Tingyu puts you down to one. He's got a... I, there's yeah, nothing that Gerhardt can do. There's just too many problem cards yeah, in play right now. there's nothing he can do. He drew a Sylvan Carrington. He's got a Thought Season extension of the hand. Adam Hart, with his innovative Nia build, is 6-0 and here in Indianapolis. And that's kind of what we...